Hello, and uh, welcome to PDX Garden Home. Well, it's getting to the end of July here, and it is hot. This is Portland, Oregon, and it's getting to 90 degrees today, so that's that's pretty hot for Portland, Oregon. Um, I'm uh, giving everything a good soak. Normally, I wouldn't be out and gardening in the heat of the day like this. So kind of go in the mornings or uh, late in the evening, but um, here at PDX Garden Home, the house is available on Airbnb, so I um, kind of sometimes have to work in between bookings um, with the garden, and so right now that's the case, is I got to get some stuff done uh, while I can, so I'm not going to be bothering guests later. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's a wonderful, beautiful day out here. The garden is amazing, and uh, really enjoying it this time of year and trying to enjoy it outside as much as I can. I guess it's never perfect, right? It's either too cold or too hot and now at some parts of the day it's it's too hot, but other parts of the day it, it is perfect here in Portland, Oregon. And so, um, yeah, it's uh, it's wonderful to, to be here and have this opportunity to garden. Coming up in today's episode, we're going to be talking about a summer favorite, zucchini. And then I'm going to share a very special part of the garden. It is the East Garden Round, where this year I'm testing out all kinds of flowers, annuals and perennials. Then we'll head back out into the kitchen garden and check out the garlic harvest. And finally, we will finish out the day in the herb garden. Well, I have a bunch to share and I'm really excited to get started, so let's head on over to the zucchini. Hi. Uh, well, today we're gonna be looking at zucchini in the garden and I can bet anything that some of my zucchini have probably gotten uh, too big. And uh, the reason I say that is because um, I just can't keep up with them. So I know that, um, uh, that they'll be larger than I larger than I would like in terms of harvesting. Maybe there'll be a couple in there that are the right size and I can point those out, but let's take a look at um, what they're looking like in the garden. Okay, so yeah, you can hear the sprinkler that's on in the background there, maybe the fans that are in the greenhouse off to the side. And uh, yeah, we're coming over here to to the squash and zucchini bed. The this, this doesn't have, I have separate beds that have the winter squash and the pumpkins and things like that in it. So this is just kind of the summer squash and also melons, um, but the melons are, they're just not taking off. They're teeny little baby things right now. And the fact that they're so little right now means I, I won't get any melons um, this year. I didn't, it was it was too kind of coolish uh, off and on so far for the summer. We're now in July and we've had a lot of cool days. And I didn't do go to any, any lengths to try to um, mitigate the coolness by setting down black plastic or anything like that. So, um, so yeah, so much for the melons. I just mentioned them because you might see them here in the bed, but I'm going to, uh, I want to focus in on the in on the zucchinis, and this is a weed here, and this is not a zucchini. This is actually I said winter squash or another bed, but this is actually a, I think a, it's probably an acorn squash that's here. But let me just kill this weed off. Okay, so here we go. This is my zucchini plant in here, and yeah, I would say this guy here is probably the perfect size. This one here is acceptable size, but it's starting to get bigger than I would want in terms of picking for optimal optimal eating. So let me go ahead and pick those. Um, and I'm just going to do that. I just get in there with my clippers and give it a good... You can just twist them out too if you're more hardcore than me. Uh, boom. Okay. And now I'm going to... Perfect. That's that's what I consider a perfect zucchini right there, um, or a courgette, as the UK folks say on all the gardening videos and stuff. I like to watch from the UK there. Okay. Um, and yeah, let's see what else we got going on here. So these are um, golden zucchini. So they're just a yellow zucchini, but they're they're not they're they're a zucchini with a yellow with a yellow skin to them is pretty much it. And these are perfect size, so I'm gonna go ahead and harvest those. Um, let me come around here and show you one that's kind of too big though. Well, no, this is still acceptable. It's not too big. It'll still be good, I guess. 
good. I don't. I was afraid I'd have some monsters in here, but I don't have any monsters in here, so that is good. Okay, well, that's it. Um, I will kind of let it go from there. So there it is, our zucchini harvest for uh, for one week here in July. Um, so that's three three zucchini plants. This is a, a round four, if you count this. This is a round zucchini, so it tastes just like zucchini. You fix it just like a zucchini, but it just grows round. I like them. You, you pick them when they're kind of baseball size like this. Um, there's our carrot harvest from earlier today, too. But no video about that one. I left that alone. But, but yeah. That's it for that's it for a zucchini. That's just about the right zucchini from for my little family, my wife and I. Um, and that's it. So this bed was kind of the accidental flower testing bed. We're in the East Garden, what we call the East Round. And um, we used to, when we first got this property, the this bed had um, blueberry bushes all around it. And maybe they were maybe a, two feet apart in some cases, maybe not even that far apart. They're pretty close together. And also this kind of dappled sunlight that we see here is what this area gets most of the day. So there wasn't a, a ton of sun here and the blueberries just weren't doing well. And so um, I didn't know if it was the variety or the bushes just um, just weren't good. They weren't going to do well or but I, we suspected it was maybe the sun and the lack of it over here. So we moved those blueberry bushes out to the north garden in the kitchen garden that you see in so many of our pictures and other videos. And um, they did really well out there. So um, I think that, well, they did really well compared to last year. Last year we got probably no blueberries, like two or three blueberries tops, like two or three little blueberries tops out here. And, you know, they didn't, they weren't like production ready out in the kitchen garden after one year, but we had a crop of blueberries, like bowls of blueberries that we got from them. So, so they did a lot better, I should say. But uh, this, this is not about the blueberries. It's about what we did with the round this year, which is this flower garden. And I've recently just really gotten into growing flowers and annual flowers, perennials too, but um, you know, a lot of, I just kind of grow everything I get my hands on. And uh, I started out years ago, just growing veggies and vegetables. And so last year, 2018, I kind of did some more flower starts from seeds, some annuals and different things that I found that I liked. And so this year in 2019, I just went crazy with it and did all kinds of different varieties. And of course, uh, by the time we got to the end of the greenhouse season for us, which is like March into April, things were coming out of the greenhouse. We had way more starts than I could put into the, into the normal beds because I'm using so many of the beds still for veggies, especially in the North Kitchen Garden. And then the rest of the property has is so really well stocked with good perennials and things that come back every year that it didn't... I, at first, we, I was kind of in a little panic because I had this nice inventory of, of all these kind of annual and flowers, some of them perennials, that, um, and I was like, well, where are we going to put them? And so we realized, well, we just took the blueberry bushes out of here. We can put them over here. And so we filled this up with compost, and I don't know what this round was originally designed for. It looks like it could have been designed for maybe a water feature or something, but um, I'm not sure. I, I, I haven't connected or been able to know from prior owners what this was for, from neighbors what this was originally used for, because um, I'm sure it probably wasn't originally used for the blueberry bushes. It was That was probably just something they had tried out for a while. Um, but in any case, um, we filled it with a compost and we put our entire uh, extra flower inventory out here. So we've got, you can see we got a lot of different kinds and we, we tried to kind of clump them together and, and and do some design and it was a good learning experience to see how light affects the maturity, whether some of these would mature or not at all, whether they'd bloom or not at all, given the dappled sunlight that it has throughout the day. And also just to see how well they fill out the space. I mean, we had planted so many things, I thought maybe it would be totally completely full with no ground space, but, but we still do have quite a bit of ground space here. So we probably could have had more. 
um, or if there was just more sun, some of these things might have just exploded more and taken up more of the, the what we see as the ground, bare ground space. But, but yeah, that's that's been it. I think in all, it, it's turned out to be quite beautiful, and um, at least in for my standards and what and and what I'm looking for, it's certainly very enjoyable to me. A good, great place to come and relax. I go sit on that bench, and especially in these super hot days where it stays more cool over here. Well. Yeah, I just wanted to share the the east the east uh, garden and the what we call the east garden round the east round garden. Um, I say it all different ways. I haven't really concluded what I should call it, but um, yeah, I wanted to share what we were doing in here this year and, and how beautiful it's looking. Hi, well today we're going to take a look at harvesting the garlic. Uh, when it comes to garlic, they say you should um, be waiting until the uh, green uh, the green leaves kind of turn brown and they're kind of flopping over and then that's how you know um, when they'd be ready. Garlic is usually planted in the fall. The garlic that um, I'm going to show you in our beds was planted back in October and then um, yeah, it's been just growing uh, since then and um, now it's July and so um, it may not be exactly ready I'll show you where it is it is falling over it is kind of browning there are some that are still fairly green then so I think and I'd harvest some um, the other day and the the bulbs were still not as big as they probably could get so I think you could technically wait but I'm just getting anxious and I want to go ahead and get it taken care of and so uh, we'll come into this field here and then um, take a look at the garlic uh, that we have to harvest. Okay, so this is the the bed that had the garlic in it. This actually had a giant, you may have seen it in my other videos, this had a giant, um, uh, oh gosh, what is that called? A big thing with ferns. This example of it here. Um, I've lost my mind now, so I can't remember what this, what this was called. It's got the licorice flavor on it. Fennel, a, 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 a giant fennel was hanging out here and it had actually grown for over a year and it was just this huge monster and so I, I've already taken that out. And so now I'm gonna be coming through this bed here and pulling out the pulling out the um, the garlic that's in here. And so you know here's an example here. Of the garlic that's in there. There we go. Um, and so you can see kind of the way the way I do that is I'm going to wiggle my knife in there a little bit just to make sure it's nice and loose before I pull at the stem. Okay. And then, oh, I got three of them together here. Didn't expect that. Okay. And then I'm just going to shake that out. I'm going to throw them just off to the side there and pile them up and then I'll take them into the potting shed to dry out and basically I'll wait till um, the stems are totally dried out and then I'll um, I'll uh, braid them up once the stems are dried out there. Do another one here. Okay. So this is in between my quinoa here. We've got some quinoa hanging out there and I'm gonna just and this was the quinoa that's in this bed by the way was just a was really just a volunteer I didn't uh, plan on it being there but once I saw it coming I thought well it's gonna it's gonna look good may as well okay so that's that's the process I'm gonna I'm going to go ahead and get this done and uh, get it uh, stored in the potting shed. So this is the herb garden here. Um, some echinacea in the back that I'm watering back over there. 
um, and you can see a lot of our a lot of the herbs they've just gotten really dry and hot it's you know this is kind of a mixed area in the sense that it doesn't um, it doesn't get as much sun as out in the north kitchen garden but um, it also we don't have a regular sprinkler set up on it either so it kind of gets dry and and hot and you can see that it's kind of flowered it's like you got some very little plants that are already gone to flower um, and I think it's a, a reflection of the fact that we didn't um, a reflection of the fact that it we really didn't get enough um, sun to it so that it we got a lot of heat to it so it's kind of bolting so to speak to the extent herbs bolt but it's it's kind of bolting but it's um, they're not big and lush plants the way you would want um, if they had better growing conditions so um, we've kind of been trying to make this make this a go with the herb garden and it, and it and it works for some of the perennial type stuff like this is a what i'm watering here is a pineapple sage and we planted that last year and, and it's gone really good um, there's a rosemary bush there's some chives they, they do really well there's a thyme bush that does well but kind of like the regular like basil type stuff i think we would have um probably had more lush and more growth in a in a regular kind of if we put it in our north kitchen garden where we've got more kind of regular sunlight going on um, down here we have uh, what I'm watering over here is the uh, this is Mexican tarragon um, it makes quite a attractive yellow flower so this one went okay I like how this one kind of turned out here um, and this tree this is why we called this the herb garden I think that was the intent of the original owners who kind of put in the bones of this garden is that this is a bay leaf tree and then they already had the um, the thyme and then some sage and um and uh and the chives in here and so so they and, and there's also lemon balm kind of exploding back that way um so so yeah they had already done the done kind of the the setup of making this kind of the herb bed and so we've been trying to carry that on in in their tradition but um, I think I may, I'll still do that next year. We'll still plant herbs here again. Maybe what we'll plant is more of the kind of perennial type herbs to fill out the rest of the bed. And then um, I'll take maybe the annual herbs and put them in a regular uh, bed in the kitchen garden um, out in the north garden next year. That's what I'm overall thinking about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've got enough basil for us. I mean, we won't use you know we've been growing all this stuff but we don't actually use it because i i don't often get to cook and um so we give most of our most of our kitchen garden stuff away and our um herbs away and things of that nature it's just fun to be able to grow it and say hey we have our own if we need it um we never really need it but but <clears throat> to be able to say it's there if we need it is kind of cool well i'm tired and so i'm gonna have to call it a day i wish i could do so much more but that's that's pretty much it that's all i can handle i've been shooting some different videos today and doing some gardening in the heat and my feet are tired my lower back's feeling it from all the standing around walking around so yeah it's time for me to it's time for me to call it a day and maybe go get a go get a margarita and some tacos <laughs>